Hey, greetings, everyone. Hope everybody can hear me. Am I coming through with the microphone? Audio test. Yeah, okay. So the microphone is working. I hope the music I'm listening to is not coming in. I don't know. Hope hope everything's fine. Comments. Okay, so um, it is a bit loud for me, but I will. Okay, so what I'm doing is uh, this is um, I haven't worked with the satellite platform in a while. I don't like wireless headphones. But in this case, this these wires are getting annoying. But a while ago, my foot's getting caught in it. Yeah, now it's, these wires are getting annoyed, annoying. Okay, so let's see. Bring this up real, real fast. So a while ago, I was working on. Uh, this satellite thing, if you remember this, um, I'm getting back to it. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. I have some ideas that I'm going to be fleshing out with it. So where I left off last time was doing a CAD thing, showing the uh, the inside turret part. It had a weapon, things like that. I'll show that in a little in a little bit. Right now, though, I'm working on making these things 3d printable so um yesterday i spent some time i did the inside part here uh, an attachment um came home and attached uh this piece here then i realized oh, it's, it's a bit too too short too small because you know when you when you put a figure right next to it you know ground height the weapon is going to be sh kind of short it looks better if the weapon was was higher up and that so if the weapon is going to be turning around it's going to need to clear these little things and so anyway one thing is leading to another and i have to make adjustments so um with a weapon not the weapon that it's supposed to have i was using this as the uh the physical example so approximately it fits like around like that something like this and uh, of course this is a bit kind of low so the idea was to raise it up some you know so it'd be like you know around this this tall and uh, so one thing is leading to another with the design and I thought I would go ahead and finish it there's a few other projects coming down the road that I need to clear out clear this out so I can um, get started with those things but of course, you know, when you're working with this, when you're working with an idea, other ideas come into, into play. So I'm thinking of different things with planetary assault, planetary defense. This is all, if you're curious, this is all uh, linked to the Die Warriors uh, figure project that we're working on called Conspiracy. So that's, it's a space theme. And well, if you're going to have, we do have human astronauts as well as aliens in this theme. So in terms of the human side, you know, being the underdogs in, in, in technology compared to, to aliens, uh, let's say, you know, humans are uh, settling, let's say on Mars. So they're going to need weapon platforms that can just be dropped from orbit and, you know, landed on, on an area different kinds of weapons um 
artificial intelligent design type stuff that will have uh, some sort of energy weapon or projectile weapon, uh, missile pods, things like that. But other ideas were coming to mind. So using this simple um, design for a, a, a lander that can land on, on some planetary body, I was thinking besides something offensive, defensive in terms of a weapon, it could have uh, communication arrays on top. So you could have, for example, if you want to do, if you want to play this kind of logically, uh, you could have a primary uh, platform on a planet, the main AI kind of thing, providing uh, communications to a uh, location in orbit, and that one would have a boost to communicate with, let's say, an Earth satellite somewhere. Uh, so in other words, a system with a lot of uh, heavy uh, communication equipment. And you could do other things, like you could have uh, one that has uh, shields or both communications and, sh and some sort of energy shielding type thing. You could have uh, other satellite uh, platforms, I call them satellite platforms, other platforms scattered throughout the landscape with uh, weapon, different kinds of weapon systems, uh, long-range systems, short-range systems, systems that are designed to protect the main communication platform. And you could do other things, you know, you could have a, a, a satellite platform like this, um, functioning like a miniature dropship. You could have androids, uh, cobra bats, uh, android uh, robots, um, you know, deployed in a cargo hold on something like this. So the, the idea is that it lands on some planet surface, hatches open, and there's, you know, it deploys robots, robot sentries could be androids, could be uh, some other kind of vehicle, could be a mix, you know, humanoid robots coming out, so some sort of crane dropping a, a larger uh, tracked battlefield robot, maybe from one each side, and you have maybe one or two androids. Yeah, it just depends, you know. You could do um, other little ideas like some sort of gun cabinet that could be dropped, basically a supply drop. So, it's, you know, you could have stuff like gear, foods, backpacks, things like that, um, battery stuff, other survival stuff, as well as weapons, you know, that could be supplied for an astronaut, things like that, ammo for other things. So there's a lot of, uh, not my voice, huh? there's a lot of, uh, of possible ideas that one can do just replacing the weapon part. So I'm designing this thing so it could be modular like that. And of course, one thing that helps with the, the sci-fi style is have a lot of military looking greebles, you know, uh, but something that doesn't look like it's too delicate. Something that looks like it could take some punishment, have redundancy. So that's what I'm working on right now. What I'm doing for this moment is I am preparing, uh, I am redoing this section here, this section here making it taller to add some more height. You'll see why. So this has attachment points. I will be attaching uh, ex uh, other items that will mount different kinds of weapons. So from here, there's another attachment that goes on top and it's modular. So there's a rear attachment, a front attachment those things can be changed depending on future ideas. And uh, so the rear one is what I'm focusing on. Um, it's going to have from the, the rear part, it's going to have the, the weapon system, which is going to be similar to this, except this is redesigned at the moment. The back part is, is shorter. What I'm doing with the back part, if you're curious, is uh, where can I put this? is that um first of all uh this bothers me when when the tube is kind of warped okay so first of all what i'm doing is i am shortening this back part here so the idea is that um well mostly because i need clearance as the thing rotates around and it pivots it's going to be impacting against the uh, 
other structures. So I really want this thing to have a 90 degree uh, up firing uh, position. And, um, and of course, 360 degree rotation. It's got 360, so I'm working on the 90 degree pivot. The other thing is that um, in terms of thinking about space requirements on this, okay, I haven't done it, but I'm thinking like in the future, what if there's some sort of protective capsule that's around a structure, a, a satellite platform like this? If I have too many things too wide or you know too long on the weapon, then that capsule is going to have to you know be bigger. So I'm thinking of piling things on top. So if you can imagine this thing here uh, being shorter, truncating right there, and other kinds of equipment, sensors, other things put be placed on top of the weapon itself. It might also function as a type of armor, uh, depending what it is, you know, um, some sort of structure. Maybe I could have some armor shielding that can kind of protect the sides. So have, you know, one in, on one side, one on the other. So two, two weapons, each one with some sort of armor protecting the sides from, uh, from issues. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet because this is all kind of winging it if the thing pivots. Well, so before I get too distracted and start thinking of other possibilities, I am going to jump into the CAD part. Um, so with the CAD part, what I'm doing is, um, and you'll see as I go back and forth, so let me switch windows to here. So what I'm doing is um, I'm going back and forth between this new design that's a little bit taller to the old design, which is right here. This is a copy of it. And um, so I'm not making it an exact copy. Uh, for example, you can see there I made changes to the hatch right here. The hatch on this item, I think, is a little bit too small to be believable. I mean, it's very small. I mean, it's just for like an electronics thing then, or like a fuse box. You know, it's very small. So, um, what I'm doing is making it bigger. Um, what I'm going to do here is what I have left to do before I finish this part and I send it to the printer is I need to um, reinforce these uh, ports for attaching things. I need to reinforce it with uh, this type of structure that goes around it, mostly for the 3D printing um, aspects and then a little bit on the on the aesthetic aesthetics. I need to uh, do the cutouts. This is for the peg. You'll see it in, in the larger window in, in just a moment where I show more of the assembly. It's a cutout for the peg, and uh, but I need to incorporate that. This prints upside down like this, so I needed to once I did the cuts, I needed to re um, to reinforce how the printer is going to be ha handling these overhangs. So I had to do this little uh, hanging part there, which doesn't look so bad aesthetically, but. Um, but I'm going to incorporate that right now into this other design. And I'm going to make it a little bit, the new design, a little bit uh, simpler. So it's not going to have some of these additional pieces. And then I'll just uh, fillet, fillet or fillet the, um, uh, the edges. You know, the idea is that it's going to simulate, you know, welding and things like that. If I had a 3D pen, I would go ahead and manually do uh, welding uh, marks. Uh, but so anyway, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to get this part uh, resolved. And then um, I'll show the big picture. So let me do that real fast.
Now, I'm not paying attention to any comments. If you do have comments, uh, please leave them. I'll get to them, whether I'll get to them right uh, now during the, um, the stream or I leave it for later and I'll address it uh, after. Not quite sure yet, but um, I'll get to those comments. So no comments will be unanswered. Uh, okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to... Do a fillet. I notice whenever I do a stream, the um, the computer gets a little bit sluggish on the response for this. Uh, I don't want to do a fillet there. Sorry, I want to do a chamfer. So the idea of these chamfers is so when I do uh, 3D printing, I'm not dealing with an overhang. 0.75. Uh, it's actually five millimeters, I think. So these, so when the thing prints, okay, the things structures like this is going to be an overhang. So I want to kind of reinforce it by removing as much of the overhangs as possible. So aesthetically, that could be a problem. I don't want to be dealing with uh 3D printing supports that I have to go back and remove the supports. So what I'm doing with this is I'm incorporating supports into the design, making it look like some reinforced uh, military style greeble or something, say military style. You can imagine hinges being reinforced to make it stronger instead of just uh, aesthetically nice like a consumer hinge would be these are hinges with stronger points and uh, so i'm doing it like this to make it look like they've been beefed up and re reinforced and that gives a kind of um in my opinion uh, a military look to it functional stronger not necessarily consumer pleasing to the eye. You know. And when you look at a lot of military equipment, you know, they have this a type of aesthetic that doesn't look civilian at all. I mean, it looks military. You can just look at a particular vehicle, a tire. Uh, the way the treads are on, on the tire, and you can see, oh, this doesn't look civilian, this looks military. The height of the tire, a tri you know, so it has that kind of quality, and I'm, that's what I'm shooting for on this. I rather have fun when I do things like this as well. And that has led me to make some changes with my plans for um, the VSS. I'll explain that in, in a little bit, but um, I don't want to get too off topic, but I am uh, taking a slightly different direction to VSS, my VSS anyway, VSS 002. Okay, what I got to do now is refer back to the original. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just simply copy these. So yesterday I did an experiment. Uh, was going to go live yesterday, but. did an experiment uh, with the laser cutters to fuse powder coats onto acrylic. It wants to work. It was a failed experiment. I tried several hours to get it going. What it is is that uh, the lasers that we have has what's called an air assist, where it blows air into the lens where the laser comes out. The idea is to keep particles from 
finding their way into the lens and, and affecting the uh, the lens, you know, so you don't have to go clean it like you have to with many other lasers. So that air assist was blowing the powder from the powder coat all over the place. So I tried different techniques. I tried uh, a little bit of hairspray to um, kind of stick the powder to the acrylic with the idea that the excess I could simply put into water to wash off. And of course, would it be washing off the, the powder coat because that would be fused by heat to the acrylic. Well, that kind of worked, but did it work well enough? Uh, actually, what? How much do I need to make this? No, I know what I need to do. Okay. I need to make this cut deeper. Yeah, so the results of that powder coat experiment was not pleasing at all. I could have done better painting it. But this is round one with the experiments. Round two is that I'm going to see about disconnecting the fan that blows air for the air assist, physically dis disconnecting it. If it does work, then I'll see about incorporating some sort of on-off switch so I can toggle the um, air assist on or off whenever I need. I'm saving this. This doesn't seem right. I think I need to do this, watch. I want this thing to cut instead of this surface, this surface. Something like that. And that means that I need to I need to recut these things here. We go sketch, sketch. Oh, yeah, I'm sketching here, right? Sketch, sketch. Actually. From here, I want to get the center point of these circles or these arcs that I want to go offset. Arc. I believe these are 1.5. Yeah. So then I just gotta I'm just gonna copy paste. Copy paste it. Here. Make a center line right about here. Oh, it needs to be 90 degrees. Kind of just spread. And copy all of this. Mirror. Oh, yeah, because there's more than one. I've got these lines in the middle. More than one construction line. I gotta specify this construction line. Okay. So that enable features, extruded cut. Now I'm gonna say up to surface. Which surface? This surface right there. Good. Save. I always save as much as I can. 
Okay, so let's see, get it back on track. Uh, I need to do the next step. Is going to be these parts here. And that's a good step to do since I just did cut and paste on that uh, cutout. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on th these two. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to go sketch, sketch. I'm going to paste this. There. The reason why I like to do these mirrors mirror mirroring these objects is because SolidWorks will try to keep the values for these mirrors so whenever I change a value because it's been mirrored the value change will carry over to the you know throughout the mirror So as long as I change this one that's on the right, this one's going to get changed as well. Uh, let me do this one again because, you know, well, in time, which one is my... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to do this. Watch this. I'm not going to take this middle line. Got a little mirror. Okay. And then I'm going to go, oh, well, no, 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 watch, do the offset, okay, 150, yeah, 150 is fine, select chain, this, that, now I could do, oh, uh, just control Z. Control Z because I made a silly mistake. Don't want bidirectional. Okay. So then I should just select all of this, deselect that mirror. Okay. Features, extrude. And let's see, I want to make this the same as, same height as that. Okay. Now I've got to save. Now I'm going to um, Flat, fillet, flat this areas here, these areas. I'm just going to keep things simple by doing multiple steps. Okay, now um, do this again. What I want to do here, though, make this about zero point five. Just make this a little bit working inside here. And it's just going to help for a cleaner print. Now I'm going to do fillet. Fillet, fillet, I don't know how you pronounce this. 0 0.25.
I guess I could make this uh, half a millimeter. I probably will come back to this later. Let me just make this 0 0.5. Because there's things I want to finish off here, but I'll do that in just a bit, really. Um, now what I want to do is go back to 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And I want to do... Okay, just simply do all of the surface. No, something's not compatible with it. So I'll just do it manually like this. So I have been looking into um, Casting, mostly because I got some ideas I want to do on casting. Uh, making some holograms for our hologram table. And instead of 3D printing the holograms, I may, because that takes time. And not every time with the resins, I notice, is it going to be consistent. Sometimes the resins are older when you get them from the store. So when they, they arrive, the resins are sometimes already yellowing or, you know, changing. Basically, their chemical properties are, ch are changing already. It's just sitting on the shelf. So what I am going to do is I'm going to see about casting uh, in crystal clear resin these objects that should be clear I think I can I think it's safe to do these right now so uh and you know hopefully it'll be faster also than than printing in terms of multiple pieces I don't want to get into casting I'm not a caster I don't I don't particularly enjoy casting mostly because it takes a lot of time to get the experience to know the ins and outs on how to make a very good cast. I don't have a lot of that time. I'm going to have to get familiar with it if I want to do these things, but I don't want to be into the casting scene. I'm not a caster. And, uh, but you know, it's one of those things that I need to be familiar with, knowledgeable with. I particularly rather leave it up to those who do enjoy casting to do the bulk casting. But in terms of experimentation, I'm going to have to know the ins and outs. And, uh, but, you know, like I said, I don't want to get, you know, too involved in it because I don't want to be getting the pressure pots. I don't want to be getting, you know, a vacuum, uh, whatever, vacuum chamber. Like I said, you know, it's it's a complete different world than than 3D printing is. You know, 3D printing, you do things with resins. Well, you're going to need this. You need you're going to need that. Containers to store the resins. Uh, UV chambers for for curing the resins. It's one set of of tools, you know, different kinds of tools to deal with those resins. Well, casting's got a lot of that too. And like I said, there's a lot that uh, a caster will, you know, spend time to really getting familiar with all of their tools and they'll, they will get good at it because, you know, you do it a number of times you get familiar and then you get the experience to make it you know to know what works what doesn't work and uh 
so there's people out there who do things with uh, the 3D printed uh, scene. And I say, let you know, let them. That's what they enjoy doing. So it's like, okay, you know, they enjoy it. That's great. Um, I enjoy 3D printing. So, you know, maybe we can help each other out. But the thing is, is that I need to experiment myself and see what I can do so I can do something I know will will cast well and then hand it over to a caster who can make these things in bulk for me. Um, oh, I guess I need this. Huh? Okay, so save. Now what I need to do is uh, go back to the original here and I think I'm liking the way it's coming out. I'm going to now focus on, well, not that, I'm going to focus on this. So here I am. See, this is the shape of the peg that I'm going to be cutting out, copy. So I put the peg there and then I just, you know, so how deep do I need to make this cut? One point seven five. Okay. So what I do is I come back to the original to the one I'm working with, and then just cut and paste. So I'm right here. Sketch, sketch. This is coming along pretty quick. So in a short time, I'll be done with this. As long as my computer can. Oh, it did it. Okay. Control V. How come this doesn't quite look? Okay. I'm just trusting that it's going to, to be okay. Because I noticed that this line here, is, that end point does not meet the center point there. So maybe that's on purpose. I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to go with it. Because, you know, it, I just copy paste it. It works for this one. So, it must work. Features, extruded cuts, 1.75. 1.75. Okay. So it's going to print right side up like this. What I'm going to do here is make um, an aesthetically looking, aesthetically pleasing cutout. Sketch, sketch. I don't have to do too much with it. I just have to specify the dimensions 0.25. But it automatically took the outline to reverse it. I think Yeah, this is fine. Now I'm going to do this again. This time I'm going to select this. I would say select chain so it gets the whole thing. That's good. I'll make a mirror. 
center line right here. Ninety degrees, yes. Okay, I'm gonna select it. I'll say mirror entities. Okay, then I'm gonna select all of it. Copy. Then I'm gonna go features, extrude cut, and make a small little undercut at zero point five. Zero point five. Okay, now do it for the other side. So I need to get some clear resin, which I just that just came in a few days ago. Ooh, let's see. Oh. -ho. Let's see, a bit of a, let's see, uh, I need to change, switch gears here for a moment. something real fast Okay, I'll check back on this in just a moment. 
So, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, it's change gear back to here. Okay, getting back to this. So go features, extrude a cut. Okay, so save this. Okay, gotta switch again. Let's see to our uh, okay. Okay, let me get back to this and uh there. Okay. So um yeah, so I gotta do the same idea. So it prints like this. So now what I'm gonna do is do that little lip piece there and uh So what I'll do is I will start from here. Go sketch, sketch. This is an arc, two arcs, but this is an arc here. This to here. This to here. Uh Uh, let's see. If I say two. Okay. Two. Okay, and I don't need to do it on this side. So, let me see. So let me just delete this. Okay, so then now I'm going to go to uh, offsets. Actually, I don't need to offset anything. And I am going to make it straight. Looks a bit off. Two one eighty. This needs to be two. Because I want to take it as two. So delete it. Two. 
two. 90 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to make a mirror of this. Also 90 degrees. So almost done with this part. I'll be able to send it to the printer. Okay, so what I was talking about, oh, CDB. Well, I was talking about the uh, the resins is that so I, so I'm I'm currently redesigning the hologram table. People have been asking about the hologram table, so that is coming. I'm happy to say, and it's going to be. Including, I don't know if I'm actually going to include the USB or let, let a, a person, um, you know, the customer buy their own. Or maybe I will include, I'm not quite sure, but I want to include uh, USB lights, you know, like little USB lights. And uh, so I want to have that. Basically, I want the hologram table to have. An RGB USB light. These are just white. So I'm going to have to see about ordering some RGB ones. And so that way, the idea is, you know, you got a hologram. It's a hologram could be in green, could be in blue, could be in red. And it's got its own light source. So all you have to do is just provide the USB cord wire to it. And uh, up to the surface. So that's the next step. Offset from surface, inverse offset. So that was about two, so let's say about two. Then I could go chamfer right here. So the idea is I am going to be 3D printing different hologram stuff. And these things, I think, you know, if you're a fan of a, of a high-tech um, diorama for your headquarters, these would be things that I think you would like. And uh, so it'll be things like cityscapes, things like that, uh, you know, um, among other things, landmarks, things that are public domain, so I don't have to, um, you know, worry about legalities with any of it. Uh, let's see, save this. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so yeah, so cityscapes, things like that. I need to do some more aesthetics right here, champ for this. Maybe 0 0.75. Yeah, this might work. Oh, yeah, how about that? Uh, that's kind of narrow right there, kind of short.
Yeah, I think this is doable. Maybe it should be five millimeters instead of zero point seven five. Point five millimeters, sorry. So that's one. Aha, look at that. Cancel. I just saw an issue. Look at this. How did this occur? Hmm. Got to be a little detective here. Sketch. What's the difference? What's the spacing? Here to here is what? 1 1.5. 1.5. Why is, is this, let's see, sketch. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm trying to find where does that cut occur that is screwed up like this. Well, it's not there. I might have to just manually go back in. And, I don't know, this is weird. Is it like that on the other side? Definitely save this. Let's see. What's this about a graphics card? Wait. Well, let's see. I'm just going to wrap this part up, and then I'm going to uh, end the, uh, the broadcast.
I gotta figure this part here out. I just got a little distracted on, on an issue that just came to my attention. Yeah, I don't know why it's... But what I think I'm going to have to do is... Uh, Ah, uh, it's gonna have to be a little bit on a on a pain. Okay, what I gotta do, I'm just going to uh, it's I don't know why, but the easiest way for me right now, kinda distracted to fix this part. Would be to just simply go over this. Basically, uh, just bulk this part up. Features. Line up to surface right here. Oh, I don't that. I'm sorry, right here. second direction this is not the way I want to do this it's just instead of going back and figuring things out this is kind of Frankenstein but oh well sketch sketch Sketch. Features. Oh, sorry. What did it sketch? What I want to do on this sketch is simply trace. So the easiest way really is just to do something like this. Watch. Okay, so features, uh, let's just take, take that line and go extrude and cut. Just like that, okay. Okay, so now it should be resembling how this other side is 
you know, part of it doesn't look like it's... No, it, it does. It just seems a bit off. Anyway, we'll see how things are when it goes to printing. Okay, so... Um, So what I was doing, where I left off, was the chamfer. So let's try 0 0.5 instead. 0 0.5. And the, yeah, this is chamfer. Now do the other side. Take the face. Okay, so this looks good. Now I'm going to beautify. Well, there's one more thing I got to do before I start. So let me save this. I'll switch to the original. This part here, this cutout. Sketch. Then I'm just going to copy this. Copy. Okay. Uh, then I want to. Sketch, sketch, paste. No features. And I think just three more things to do, and then I can end this. So uh, fine. Up to the surface. Okay, almost. What I need to do here is um, go to the original, take a look at settings for the edges here. Three 
three millimeters. Okay. So, chap for. Three. Okay. 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 And here. Okay. Now what I gotta do is uh, I might keep the same settings. Probably more like two. Yeah. Okay, almost. Now, uh, Now it does have, it is going to have a little issue with um, overhangs. So what I need to do, and I'm going to do it right in the middle plane, is make a little bitty hidden support structure. is where I gotta be. Zero point two five, wow. It's gonna be a small one. Offset. Uh let's just make this one. End caps, yeah. Lines, okay. And just make a little mirror. Uh, right back in the middle. Okay. And mirror entities. Copy. Well, I don't need to copy it, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Features extruded. And I'm going to extrude this up to vertex where the where two shapes meet, right? Basically right here. It's a seam line. That's one. And direction two, same thing to vertex. Just right there. Okay. Okay, and I can go ahead and just just kind of put some aesthetics there. Zero point two five. Actually, I don't really need to do any. I'm not gonna do any. Okay, so. Okay, so what I need to do now is just uh, go around to the sharp edges and things and make it a little bit easier for me to well, it helps make a nicer print. Something along this this line here, here, here. Okay, and here, here, here.
Okay. So. I am also going to round these areas here. By doing the face, it does all the edges. Okay, and one more for the pegs. Okay, so let's see. There's one little piece. No, there's no little piece. That's it. Okay, so the next step with this is I'm going to, I'm confident with how it's going to look. So let me just go and uh, file, save as. Come on. STL. Uh, STL. A31. Okay. Save this. Uh, yeah, STL. Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. The original model here. Close it. File open. Now you may see some errors uh, because this is a project I'm currently tinkering with, messing around with. Ignore the errors. Uh, let's see. Could be this one. Oh. Let's do this one. Open. Rebuild, yes. Now the radar tracking dome piece, I'm not quite liking the way it is looking, so I may not use that one. I am still undecided. I want to add another component in the front here, but... Uh, it's not quite the files to to bring up. Mostly because this is dealing with um, uh, a configuration, and I am not quite at ease in working with a configuration. Configurations is uh, I can work with multiple assemblies and switch instead of having. Like, you know, 500 different files of each one is a different assembly with showing similar components. I could just have one assembly showing the combination of these components. And then I can turn off or on these combinations. Let me just see. How do I... I don't know. I, I really don't know how I go, go about I'll have to figure this out, but let me do that another time. So instead, let me try again, open. See, that one was that one, so let me try. No, was it? I don't think so. I think it was this one. Open. Um. 
configurations. So this is zero one. Uh, I don't want to see configurations. File open. So let's try this one. Oh, maybe this is not the file I'm looking for either. Rebuild, rebuild. Uh, yeah, not what I'm looking for. Well, I'll save that, but let me open up another one. The other, the, out of three, let me open up the last one. So... open try this one the middle one open i really have to learn how to work with configurations okay now you can see the the dome part here uh it's armored i don't quite like the way it looks so I'm going to make some alterations but I'm not going to do the alterations right now rebuild okay so what I want to do is I want to select that part it's right here so then I want to say um, replace. Replace component with this component. Yeah. I'm just checking that the that uh, the mates are are not being screwed up so yeah okay looks like this will work well kind of partially worked so assembly dome Well, let's see. Well, so these are things for another time. Looks like there's some errors here. Maybe I can quickly fix them. I wish I can see the rest of the name. Okay. So there's not, a, not an issue there.
Okay, so I think... Oh, I see. It's not... Okay. It's right here. That's the missing face. Right there. Okay, good. Okay. Do to the other side. So this is what happens, you know, sometimes. Uh, because this is a new part here, it didn't associate properly the old relation. So I have to just redefine it. So, oh yeah, so so there's a there's a issue here, huh? Other mate would say Mr. Reference, yes. Try that. Ah, okay. So not nice. It automatically fixed things then once you figure out the relationships. Okay, so the remaining errors are just the way these uh, parts are connected. So anyway, yeah, so I think this is good for um, good enough for printing now uh, this next seg segment the next part and uh i will do that today that's going to probably take uh, two hours of printing uh in about an hour i have to to run run on an errand 
then I'll when I get back I'll be able to do the printing again and uh, Yeah, it's beginning to look better. So what I'm going to do with this, I am going to remove this uh, armor piece. And if I do, I may not completely remove it. I may just reduce the height and uh, put that extension in front. So that way I could put something, uh, a different kind of sensor in the front. Maybe it could be something more, uh, more, um, so, you know, you have on something like a, like a phalanx, what is a CIWS, something like that. You have uh, this radar dome which this is a small version of that. So you have the dome on top, which is the radar that tracks a wide area. And then once a target has been selected, it narrows on that target. That, and then, so that follows into the secondary radar, a tracking radar that tracks specifically the targets. So, you know, one radar is tracking the target specifically, and the other radar is keeping the track of everything else that's going around looking for potential targets so this is a, a mini version of that so what i'm thinking of doing is perhaps put a smaller uh radar maybe more conical so it's on the front now the thing is is that i won't do it well I, I may just have it in a fixed position maybe it'll pivot but it won't it won't swivel it'll just pivot maybe the idea see i this i don't know maybe i'll do some other kind of sensor instead of radar Maybe it will be uh, some sort of optical sensor. In other words, cameras. Among with other kinds of things. Maybe that could be the the geo, what it's called, geocam. You know, one of those ball-looking cameras. Maybe I could do something like that. We'll make a modification where it has additional sensors on there. Look more sci-fi. Or maybe it'll just be um, kind of like a, almost like a cylinder goes up and it has a curved part. So you have this glass uh, um, section. So, or it may not be glass, but I don't know. So I'm, in other words, I'm thinking of altering the sensor part. Okay, so... When I get back, I will, I'm not worried about these things. These are issues related from the weapon. I'll work with that later. So what I'm going to do when I get back is print this. Arrange it on the STL uh, layout and uh, print that. The next step is working with this section back here. So this section in blue, uh, what I just need to do with it is just make a little, little bit, make it look a little bit more um, military, you know, a little bit more functional, a little bit more practical looking. Uh, of course, I need to design the pegs for these things. I got to see where these pegs are. Okay, yeah. So I got to just put the pegs for that. And... 
you know, in, uh, mounted with the pegs. Um, what I'm thinking though is a greeble that goes on top of the pegs for attaching cables, things like that. You know, because things always look good when they have uh, attachment points or cables. And I am thinking something along the lines like that. I'm go I'm just going to leave this section back here open for future expansion. It's probably the same thing on the bottom part, but I am looking for, you know, more greeble attachments. So maybe I may uh, make greeble for hose attachments. Uh, maybe it'll be, you know, maybe it'll be something for the idea of battery. A battery pack or something like that with some sort of cable connecting to it uh the weapons themselves they're on a frame i gotta work with the frame make it look a little bit uh aesthetically pleasing and uh but i don't have to do too much work with that because it's a frame um the top part here i do need to do some greebles kind of cover up these um these ports and that's essentially it uh, oh yeah so what I do want to do is free up uh, maybe I can make a cutout for this uh, this port here on the weapon so this part can be uh, you know so we can attach additional stuff mount mounted stuff to it uh, so this part here truncates quite kind of early. Uh, I'll have to see if I need to extend it or not, or just add a piece to it. But essentially, what I want to do is add any type of um, additional uh, weapon uh, system, like a uh, power unit if it's a laser thing, um, maybe something for solar, something to attach solar. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I just might do uh, some attachments on the top for solar, solar panels, solar power. Armored solar power. <laughs> so, okay, well, that's it for now. Um, let's see. Move this back like that. Maximize this. And let's do change some of the graphics. So the overall idea. And notice, though, that these rings are a little different than the physical model that I have here. Uh, was, is done to help give it more clearance So for the weapons. And so that's how it's looking thus far. Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead and save this. So, yeah, things move. Look at that. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, it wouldn't get sluggish. Oh, that part can't move. Can I move it here? I uh, guess that can't be moved. Okay. So, that's how it looks. It's going to be an awesome looking uh, prop. Remember, this is for the Die Warriors. Um, conspiracy uh, line of action figures so this is just one of many pro uh, projects 
that are being co- that I'm working on to support that. Uh, when it comes to mass production, uh, we'll see what we can do. It may be uh, all 3D printed, whereas the figures will be injection molded. Uh, these items may be all uh, 3D printed, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the what the Kickstarter can cover, and. Because I would love to get this also injection molded. But, you know, it's a lot of parts. And some of these parts will, you know, are easier to 3D print than would be to injection mold. Because, you know, with injection molding, you have to do things like put a draft, uh, change the proportion of, of objects, make them a little bit bigger to account for shrinkage in the plastics. You've got to do some of that with 3D printing but not to the extent as injection molding. Um, and of course, when it comes to assembly, it's going to be better, I think, for something like this to be, to assemble it like a model when it comes as 3D printed, like a typical Die Warrior uh, prop. You put it together like a model when if if we do this as injection molded i'll probably just include the sprues so you treat it like a fine scale model and you cut the pieces and you glue the pieces together so that the weapon you know may come as more pieces for you know through injection molding than it would be for 3d printing so that means more more molds, which means more cost. So it's a trade-off, you know, you get a nicer looking piece and it's in a sense that it's smoother and things like that. But uh, but it also means that, you know, when it comes to a Kickstarter, you have to hit a higher goal. We'll see how all of this works out. After all, you know, um, 3D printing is here to stay. Uh, the, the, the more people do things with 3D printing, filament printers, resin printers, whatever, the more they become accustomed to how a 3D uh, printed part looks. So, of course, you know, I try to minimize that by uh, using specialized plastics. But, you know, at, at a certain point, uh, you just got to do what you got to do. And if I use uh, some of these specialized plastics, it won't come in the proper colors. I would have to paint it separately. So, you know, instead of getting a painted part, you know, it may come on in this uh, kind of a greenish gray. But, you know, or maybe just all in white or, or on in black, whatever it's going to be easier to, to paint. We'll see how things go. Lots to do, lots to do. Thank you folks for uh, for watching this, this very long uh, video, uh, very long broadcast. If you have questions, please leave a comment. I will try to answer them. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick little view of any comments. And um, this, you know, I'll check the Facebook side of things later. So, okay, if you like it, please leave a, a like and su subscribe if you haven't. It really helps. Spread the word, please. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Much appreciated. So maybe I should do this. Please like it, subscribe. Okay. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next segment, uh, which will be in a few days or maybe next, next week as I 3D print more of these things. And um, so, all right, have a good one.